I am incredibly nervous. I had hardly any sleep last night. It's not the sort of thing that I normally do at all. I've heard people have got trampolines and people are going to have people dancing and, and you know, you sort of think, ooh, mm, what am I going to do to get my fuel going to me? So, a penguin. We'll have to think of a name for the penguin, won't we? I don't want to call him Percy, it's too obvious. Yes, the trampoline. So I spent quite a while trying to find ways of explaining the elastic interaction. So that's what I'm going to be demonstrating with the trampoline. I've been a bit nervous, I have to admit. Right at the end when we're doing the guts, we talk about feces. I say, Kimberly, how many bacteria? In case, just yeah, in case I forget. If I get them all wrong and say the wrong numbers, it'd be horrible. I think what they're fearing the most is the fear of the unexpected, because the public can be really unpredictable. I want to get people involved and having a go at the chemistry themselves, so just getting everything ready for that. I think for our scientists, even though they're very experienced communicators, they can happily lecture to a room full of a thousand students. This is a very different environment, and it's slightly outside their comfort zone. This is so cool because we've just got members of the public, you know, people who didn't really think, hey, I'm going to learn about science today, they're just coming along and it's awesome. <laughs> I'll be okay. As soon as I get started and I've got a few people listening, Hydrogen causes problems inside metals, ships, reactors, oil rigs, materials that are used in huge, giant structures. Have a guess what the coldest temperature ever recorded is. It was recorded in Antarctica. Wasn't it like something like minus 40? More than that. Soapbox Science is in its third year here on the South Bank, and I think what we've seen this year is a real kind of momentum with loads of people wanting to get involved. But this sea urchin is actually exactly the same material as this crystal here. Okay, so how does that animal do that, and can we use that chemistry, can we copy that in the lab to make some functional materials? We know that over the last few years there's been a real increase of scientific programmes, for example. We know the UK government's very supportive, they recognise the fact that we have an incredible lack of science talent in the country. When I talk about bacteria living on your skin, that shouldn't concern you. They keep you fit and healthy and they keep you well. In a few minutes, I'm going to work out how many bacteria are in our poo. For us to remain competitive as a country, we need to give that sort of recognition and, and, and maybe sort of give some inspiration to these girls and, and, and young boys as well. So this young lady is going to stand here and demonstrate the way hydrogen is attracted towards a crack. Do you want to see the sea spider? There are women scientists out there, but if you turn the telly on or you go into an average science lecture, you know, you won't see that. So it's really important that these women here today, these great, serious, senior scientists, are there being role models for these young girls. 18 minus 89, you're not far off. It was, it was good. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I think they've had to drag me off, so, so it was not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. If you went back 200 years ago, then the temperatures in the UK were much cooler. But most insects can't move very well if it gets too cold. The success of Soapbox lies in the scientists themselves. And our scientists this year, as every year, they have just excelled themselves. But antibiotics actually work on bacteria that are causing infections in our body. Body. We are absolutely proud of them. We got so much support and this is a huge success. We're really happy. Yeah, I mean, they run the show, they perform fabulously and they held the crowds amazingly well. So we are composed of 100 trillion different cells. And each cell, if you open it up, has DNA that is taller than these models. And if you put them end to end, that's enough to go to the sun and back 600 times. So that's a lot of DNA. And one of my favorite quotes is from Paul Nurse. He always says that there's a scientist in each of us, especially when we're children. There were a lot of scientists in front of my box today. <laughs> if you watch a movie, you see, you know, James Bond standing there while a spider crawls up his arm. Everyone cringes in the cinema. So these parts of your brain are active in a similar way as if you were feeling. 
they were interested and they were asking questions and they were engaged and it, I couldn't have expected anything like it and it was so exciting. It's such a great and different way to communicate about our work to, to the public and it's awesome. It's truly awesome. We think this is a success and we don't want to stop there. We want more, we want bigger, we want to go in other places. We want to make sure that Subbox Science will be there next year and the year after in not just London but all around the country and who knows even maybe somewhere else than in the UK. Thank you.